welcome to the second episode of season six of the Ubuntu podcast. In this episode, we're going to interview Elizabeth Crumbuck about Zubuntu. We'll be reading your feedback and having a gooey love. Plus, we'll go over your feedback. Hang on. <laughs> if you're listening live, someone needs to edit that. Uh, <laughs> you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and join our IRC channel. I'm Alan, and joining me today is Mark. Hello. Laura. Hello. And Tony. Good evening. Mark, what have you been up to? I moved house. Oh, wow. In the last week. <laughs> Since the last episode? <laughs> yes. Gosh, that was fast. I know how these things move. No, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the recent elapsed time since I last told you what I did, mm. I have moved house. Excellent. Excellent. All good? Fast internet access? Uh, no. Oh, dear. No. Um, that's although, a flaw. Although it is in a BT Infinity area, so once my contract's up, I'll look at moving. I was in, on an 18-month contract, which still ah. has six months to go, so I had to switch to ADSL. This is the most important thing when moving house, obviously, is, is yeah. to check, yeah. Absolutely. check the broadband yeah. connection. Definitely. How about you, Laura? What have you been up to in the recent past? I got a Nexus 10. <laughs> yes, you did, didn't you? So we don't have to hear you typing on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> or clicking. Yes. Do you like it? It's very nice, yes. Have you flashed it with Ubuntu yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, why would you do that? I think, point. I think I remember last episode asking whether it was possible to dual boot. Ah, I, did you? I don't I don't remember to, that. Don't was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Cool. Uh, Tony, how about you? I've been playing with my Nexus 4. You oh, might... get you, Google Ooh. family. So have I, I, in fact. We're Who all are... Nexi now. <sighs> I used to have one. <laughs> Nexi plural, yeah. <laughs> Apparently yes, you ne- Nexi. Until you dropped it. Yes. <laughs> Um, yes, I was talking about it towards the end of last season and it didn't quite arrive in time for the last episode and then it did arrive and so I played with it over Christmas and it's brilliant. I didn't think it was possible to you know, fall in love with a phone but I think I have done. He wow. Has. Yeah. Have you got really big hands? Yes. I, I, so. I have not quite big enough hands, I have to admit. It is a very big phone. Mm. I tell um, you what, one thing I would recommend anyone who's got one, there's um, Root It and then there's an app called, La- called Light Flow which lets you control the notification aid because it's rubbish by default but it can you can have it all different colors and do different things see i in, i installed that on my nexus 10 tablet yeah and my nexus 10 tablet battery halved oh dear well it hasn't halved my phones Oops. but i'll keep an mm. eye on that yeah it's mm. worth, i'm pretty sure that's what it was what about you mr pope i uh, tidied my office okay well, that's taking, well, that took you two that, months <laughs> <laughs> You've seen my office. This is true. Yes, that's yes. why it took two months. I think you bought most of it uh, in this laptop bag. You gave me earlier. <laughs> I expected Sorry a laptop. I actually got a thing full of pens and highlighters. And <laughs> I get, I, I've pencils. been uh, throwing stuff away and giving stuff away, and just trying to empty out my office. And uh, yeah, mm, any yeah, good that, that finds in there? Uh, a couple of viglins, <laughs> uh, a couple of jogglers. <laughs> <laughs> Of Are those all those competition prizes that you forgot to post? <laughs> 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 Sounds like a fun pack show. <laughs> Joining us on the line is Elizabeth Crumbach from the Ubuntu Ab- Project. How are you doing, Elizabeth? Hey, I'm doing good. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. Uh, we had a lot of people asking us to interview somebody from the Zubuntu project when we were preparing for this season, so we're very pleased to be able to have you on in our first couple of episodes. Um, so tell us a bit about Zubuntu. Uh, so Zubuntu is one of the recognised flavours. Um, instead of using Unity, or you might be familiar with Kubuntu, which uses KDE, uh, the Zubuntu project uses XFCE4. Um, So it tends to be a bit lighter weight than the Ubuntu and Kubuntu variants. Um, But at the same time, we don't really aim specifically towards lightweight, um, like a project like the Lubuntu with LXDE does. So it's got a reputation for being lightweight and um, uh, not revolutionary, shall we say. So (laughs) not changing the UI. So, you know, people who are familiar with, with, uh, you know, one of the... Desktop, Linux desktops that, that have been around for a few years, they, they'll be familiar with it. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you still have the standard uh, you know, start menu type thing um, if you click on the mouse icon at the top corner. Um, and there are some uh, application launchers now um, that, are, that have been developed, so you can t- 
type commands and then start typing something and it'll start searching through your applications. Um, so they have made some advancements, but you don't have to use those. Um, and the workflow is really centered around still a traditional desktop where you click things from menus and start things uh, from the panels. So um, how does uh, what, what makes Zubuntu Zubuntu rather than just um, an XFCE desktop? Right, so all the flavors um, have the opportunity to select their default applications. Mm -hmm. So instead of shipping with LibreOffice, um, we've chosen to use some of the GNOME um, Office products. So we have Abbey Word, and in 13.04, we're bringing back Numeric for spreadsheets. Um, we also are bringing back GIMP. Um, we had to drop that last cycle due to ISO size. Mm -hmm. um, so we still ship GIMP, whereas Ubuntu doesn't. Um, uh, and so we really have a lot of flexibility when it comes to what applications we can ship. Um, every time we have a new discussion about what music player we should be using <laughs> and, and, and explaining to everyone why we can't include VLC. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's due to uh, licensing issues and other things. Um, so, so the ISO size, do you, um, are you following suit with the main Ubuntu release in that you're now going over the size of what would fit on a CD or do you still stick to that? So we also have flexibility in that area. So with uh, 1210, we worked really, really hard uh, to stay on a, a CD. Mm -hmm. um, but with this cycle, it turns out um, that Micah Gernstein, who is our developer for that, he was spending pretty much all his time on Zubuntu working to make sure it still fit on a CD. Oh, and wow. since we have, we have like three developers, so that's like one third yeah. of our developer time. <laughs> um, so we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and we decided to go to a top limit of one gig now. Mm -hmm. um, so following what, what Ubuntu has been doing. Um, so that's when we decided to bring back GIMP and Numeric, and we're also going to add back some of the language packs because we had to drop some of those, and that was a very disappointing thing. <laughs> so. so what criteria do you use to select an application? You said you have uh, the GNOME Office suite rather than LibreOffice. Why, that, why did you choose that? So we have this huge strategy do document that was written a few years ago, um, and it pretty much outlines all the reasons we have for selecting certain applications. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, making things user-friendly, uh, but also, while we don't typically say lightweight, we want applications that look good together. Um, so things that are using typically GNOME libraries and libraries that are already installed on the system, um, which is you know why we use GNOME Office tools. Um, and we also look for applications which can be uh, customized to integrate better in the Zubuntu environment. Because another thing we do is we use um, themes that are developed by shimmerproject.org. Uh, those are the Graybird and Bluebird themes. Uh, Graybird is default. And those look very nice with our desktop. And then we make modifications to the uh, image or the music uh, software, music player software, uh, so it looks nicer with those themes. You mentioned that you have three developers. Are they full-time employed on Zubuntu? Uh, no one's employed. We're all volunteers, and it's all part-time for everyone. Okay, so three developers, is that the entire community that's around Zubuntu? Give, give us an idea of what else goes on. Right, so a lot of our, our volunteers and developers are also on the XFCE packaging list for Debian uh, because mm -hmm. we pull a lot of stuff from there. Um, and then additionally on the team, uh, we've got our theme guys who work on Shimmer Project as well. And then we have our uh, project lead who is a web developer by trade. So he pretty much keeps all the cats herded and uh, <laughs> makes sure we have meetings. And he also tends to be the one who uh, does the artwork for the default wallpaper that we tend to ship. Um, and uh, then we've got um, people who are working on testing because uh, we need to test all of our ISOs. We're actually looking for a new testing lead um, because our, our current one, again, since we're all volunteers, he got busy with life this cycle. So, <laughs> oh, that's uh, such a shame when that happens, isn't it? <laughs> for us, it is. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's having a ball. Um, but he's... So, so we actually don't have someone leading up our testing group right now. Um, and then we also have, like, technically I'm the web and marketing lead, which means I make sure the website gets updated and I make sure things get posted to Twitter and whatever other social stuff we've got going on. Um, we've tended to find existing social network stuff out there. So I found the guy who is running the Google Plus page, and I said, hey, do you want to be the official page? And he's like, that would be awesome. And I was like... 
<laughs> Nicely Keep done. doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Have a badge. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been a good strategy for growing the community because, I mean, they feel great about having, you know, that be recognized as official, and I feel great about not having to do the work. So. <laughs> right. That's a good thing. <laughs> do you have a sense of how many users you've got on Zubuntu, or at least downloads? We have no idea. Mm. Um, since we, on our downloads page, we link to, all, you know, mirrors that are all over the world and all kinds of institutions. And we don't really get any numbers from Canonical, even what's on the official mirrors uh, or on the official downloads. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's definitely been an uptick um, since Unity stuff came around. We've seen more support requests. Um, <laughs> Fancy <and> that. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Uh, yeah, support a lot of people, yeah, wanting to have a more traditional desktop, I guess. Um, well, Unity does have some specific demands on things like graphics cards and, and things that um, mm-hmm. you can understand why people might want to use that on a net on uh, use Ubuntu on a netbook or something like that. As well. mm-hmm. So, so if you have three developers, are you looking for any more, or is that enough to do everything that Ubuntu needs to do? <laughs> oh, we're always looking for more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's um, the, what? one of ours is sort of a developer in training right now, so we've got, I guess we've got two and a half. <laughs> So most of the, um, am I right, because Zubuntu is a, an official flavor, everything that's on the CD is in the archive. Um, do you have to do the work to get whatever you want on the CD in the archive, or do you work it the other way around and pick from what's in the archive on the CD? It's a little bit of a mix. Um, if, uh, For instance, we had, we had some trouble with Abbey Word getting updated in Debian, um, so we'll send volunteers to go help them maintain Abbey Word. And if we can't find the volunteers, um, then we do have to you know, change our mind about the default application. Uh, same goes with upstream maintenance. Um, if there's bugs that are outstanding that are important for us to be fixed, we'll go try to find people to fix them. Um, but if it's completely abandoned where upstream, um, there's not a whole lot we can do just because we don't have enough people to manage that. And And is XFCE heavily used in, in Debian? Because obviously Debian doesn't have the the ba- the Unity backlash because it wasn't you know, Unity is not in Debian and isn't the default desktop um, on an ISO. So um, you, you, I wouldn't expect that there'd be a huge influx of Debian users who are XFCE users, but, but obviously you have, there are some. <laughs> right. Um, so the, the next version of uh, Debian... Um uh, Wheezy is going to come with GNOME 3 as the default desktop. Um, there was there was a, a thing a few months back where one of the developers decided to switch to XFCE because GNOME 3 wasn't sit- fitting on the first CD. And that was a fun week for us. We're like, woo, <laughs> XFCE will be default for Debian. Um, but I, I think I think they did some, some moving around of stuff so they could get GNOME 3 on the first CD, and so that still is the default. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think in general, Debian people, um, they don't necessarily use the defaults a whole lot. Most of the Debian people I know are running like Fluxbox and all kinds of older things. Um, I, right. I actually run Fluxbox on my, my Debian box. And so do you have any, um, I know for Ubuntu and um, KDE, especially for things like the Plasma desktop, they have some lofty long-term goals, you know, whether that's being on tablets and phones and, and things. Um, do, does the Zubuntu project and XFCE, if you know, have kind of long-term planning for what they want to do, or is it st- is it is it steady as she goes? Um, keep on doing what you're doing and make sure it works on you know the hardware that people have. Yeah, we're pretty much focused on the desktop and just keeping it running. Um, XFCE is a heavily made updated project um so they've been releasing new versions pretty regularly so we just switched to uh, version uh, uh 410 in the 1210 release cycle um so it's actively developed but there's no real plans as far as i know to you know, move to other platforms which i think is is good for us um because even xfce while it's an active project i mean there aren't hundreds of developers or anything so focusing on what we do best i think is uh, the course they're shooting for, and I think it's the right one. Sure, and I, you know, I, I I hear a lot of people uh, who, when they when they want to choose a desktop other than GNOME Shell or you know Unity, refuse Nix, they will <laughs> almost all switch to XFCE from what I've seen. Or, and and I think they it hasn't done no many favors by monkeying around with the classic mode 
you know to such a degree that it's not working the way it you know it it was in previous mm-hmm. releases so you're kind of you know the go-to guys and gals for a desktop that that works in the way that you know um desktop that, should well <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that it did yeah <laughs> i used to use xfc on debian well, anybody who uses Mythbuntu, the derivative, uh, has the XFCE desktop oh, right. uh, installed with yeah, that. Uh, Ubuntu Studio uses XFCE these days, too. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. So have you got anything particularly spectacular planned for this development cycle that we're in now for raring or the release after that? Um, so I mentioned the increase in ISO size, which allows us to move things a little around a little bit. Um, of course, that announcement added made made people jump on us and say, "You should add this and this and this." And <laughs> <laughs> um, but all, for this cycle, we've actually worked on a lot of um, cleaning up of the paper cut type uh, type bugs, um, the things that were small and and really bothering people, um, and and that were somewhat easy to fix, um, especially since we released with the new version of XFCE last time. Um, that came, uh, that came with a few, a few problems that we've been looking to fix. Um, so it's been mostly a maintenance release to get things shaped up, um, and, and working more smoothly. Um, there's also been updates to some pieces of the software, um, that are, you know, just pretty standard updates. Um, nothing too, too exciting. So um, one of the most important things that people obviously want to know is, uh, can I search for uh, products on Amazon? <laughs> 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 no? no? Okay, just me. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get involved in the Zubuntu project? What caught your eye about it? Um, so I, I, I came from Debian, um, and I, I was using XFCE on that. Um, when I switched to Ubuntu, actually, I never really used GNOME. Um, I first The first thing I did was install Ubuntu Server and then install um, XFCE on top of that, um, which is pretty much what I did in Debian. You know, just install a base install and then right. install whatever I wanted to. Yeah. Um, and then I, I started using Zubuntu. Um, so the difference between just installing the XFCE package and using the Zubuntu desktop, um, you get certain wallpapers and themes and uh, settings are set up in certain ways. Um, and you also get default applications. Um, so I, I started using the version of actual, actually using the Zubuntu desktop because it looked nice and things were integrated well. Um, and so I'd, I'd been using it for several years. And then I was working on the Ubuntu project and doing all kinds of work elsewhere. And I was like, oh, actually, I should probably check on how these guys are doing and see if I can help them anyway. anyway. Um, so I started getting involved because I noticed the website, um, which is running Drupal 5, I think, two <laughs> years ago. It was really old then. <laughs> Um, so I was like, I was like, okay, this is something I can contribute to. Um, so I, I was able to to do the the political wrangling to f- get access to the website and and work with Canonical to get us switched over to WordPress. Um, so that was my first big project within the Zubuntu project was working to get the website um, moved over to a modern platform, and then um, now we just work to make sure it stays updated and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, one of one of the things you said that uh, you'd uh, you'd be interested in getting more of is more testers. What what's involved in testing? I mean, are we talking you know people just to run it and dog food the the development release, or are we talking booting ISOs and running through manual tests? What what kind of like level of testing are you after? So right now we follow closely with the um, Ubuntu testing team. So if you go to the ISO tracker that the QA team uses right now, you'll find Zubuntu tests. Um, so some of those are, are um, tests you can run on a live CD. Um, some of them are ISO tests that you can run um, the development version, you know, testing the ISO and booting it up on a machine and right. installing and doing the installs. Um, so we pretty closely track what, what the um, QA team does in the wider Ubuntu community. Um, and also running the development release and just reporting bugs that way. Um, I currently don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Very wise. So if people want to try Zubuntu or get involved in its development in some way, where can they find out more? So Zubuntu.org um, has links to both uh, has links to getting involved. And then under that, there's a lot of subsections, um, whether you want to get involved in uh, you know helping me with the website or uh, doing anything from development to artwork and whatever other things. Um, so the website's the best place to start for that. Um, and then our development mailing list. Um, I'll, I'll stress that our development mailing list is developing anything from documentation to, you know, software packages so mm-hmm. right. and artwork. So we pretty much do all the project work on the develop mailing list. Um, so I wouldn't, I, I'd say people don't be shy to post there about, 
hey, I've got artwork because we, that's what we use it for. Cool. So. Cool. cool. Well, thank you very much indeed for taking a few minutes to talk to us this evening. And uh, I'm sure that we'll have lots of uh, positive feedback about the uh, the idea of using Zubuntu rather than Unity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully lots of people will want to go to the website and find out more. So thank you very much indeed for talking to us, Elizabeth. Great. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Sorry. Oh dear. Welcome to our very first gooey love. Is that mm. what's got you all excited? <laughs> yes. Laura, Laura likes a little bit of gooey love. <laughs> yes. Please, somebody explain the point of this segment. Well, you know, command line up. love. I remember the segment. It's it's like command line love, but for the gooey. That is the graphical user interface, uh, usually abbreviated to GUI. Oh, is that? I see. Oh, Were you hoping for something else, Alan? No. Go so on. it's a favourite app of some sort. Yes. Excellent. What's the gooey love this week then? I don't know, it's been removed. Oh no, ah. it's there. Netflix desktop. <laughs> Mark, tell us about this. Right, so basically Netflix... Um, Which is, we've moaned about in the past. Yeah, we've moaned about in the past and, and it's kin for using Silverlight, which mm. is you know doesn't work on Linux very well for streaming. But oh, there's okay. Moonlight, isn't there? Yeah, no. Because um, oh. th- there's all sorts of DRM protection, which Moonlight doesn't do very oh, well. Okay. And um, yeah, so basically... Netflix desktop is a sort of bundle of um, a fork of wine, um, Silverlight and Firefox, which you do app to get install Netflix, well, add the PPA, app to get install Netflix desktop, and then you can click on a button which looks like the Netflix icon and it will load the Netflix homepage uh, with Silverlight running uh, in this special fork of wine, which is designed to run Silverlight and not a lot else. Um, and mm. it plays your videos. If you've got so a it, doesn't, account. it doesn't work if you just install Wine from the repository and then use that to launch the Firefox installer and then use that to launch the Silverlight installer. No, I think it, it There's some relies on, monkeying some, on some monkeying, yes, in this. Okay, well, that, I mean, it's good that they've done that monkeying. I hope that monkeying gets fed upstream and, yes. you know, everyone benefits from that. Yeah, it's not perfect at the moment. The thing is, because it's... What works? Well, Netflix works, and there's another service which works, Love Film, which is a similar Ooh, UK-based ranted about, service. You've ranted about them before, haven't you? Yeah, which I got really annoyed with when they switched from Flash to Silverlight. Right. It did work with Love Film for a while, but uh, because he keep, um, the guy who's maintaining this package keeps updating from Upstream Wine, um, and, he lives, now and, and he lives in the US, so he can't get Love Film oh. to test it very well. Yeah. Um, it broke basically because... Um, there's problems which make Silverlight throw exceptions and Netflix happily ignores them and <laughs> says, as long as the video is still playing, that's fine. Whereas Love Film says, oh, something's gone wrong, assumes Silverlight's broken and don't play anything. All oh, right, okay. So until he can work out what's um, wrong with that. And what's the playback like? Does it play... Perfect. Really? Full screen. As long as you've got the bandwidth for it, it's, it's like watching it on Windows. Wow. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. That's really good. That's quite a good one. I like that. Mm. Yeah, oh. more of that. If anyone else has a gooey love that they'd like to send us, then uh, the contact details will be read by Tony at some point. <laughs> cool. Thanks for the gooey love, Mark. And now it's time for the first feedback of the season. Yay! Which means we get all of the feedback you gave us since the last season. And Chris Zimmerman emailed us. I can't say I'm mad about the Christmas sketch, but you're all doing an awesome job. Awesome, he says. Yeah, you put the wrong emphasis there. Yeah, I kind of did that deliberately. Never mind. Uh, (laughs) Keep up the good work, especially now that Maya incident didn't happen and we're still around. The best for 2030. <laughs> was looking... that like 90s pop sensation, Maya? <laughs> yeah, she was going to t- destroy the world, if I remember, on the, at the end of December. He says he's looking forward to season six already. Love, Chris. Well, we love you too, Chris. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. Chris, and hope you're enjoying it. Anthony Ogden left a comment on our website. A shame to say, I only just discovered your podcasts, or podcasts in general, to be honest. Usually I've got my head stuck in books and magazines. Have to say, they're brilliant, love the light-hearted banter, and I picked up lots of pointers to good software. Thanks, keep them rolling. Awesome, thank cool. you. Thank wow. you. Imran Chowdhury emailed us to say... 
As per Tony's advice, I tried sending feedback via telepathy, but got a headache after a few minutes. Hope email is okay. The podcast is like a pair of comfy slippers to me. And I find myself listening to particular episodes again and again. Recent example was the Why Do We Do This segment. We're still asking ourselves the same question. <laughs> <laughs> the Xmas episode was another good one. Popey should always speak in that voice from now on. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Edwin Jury emailed us. I live in South Africa, retired to a small country town near Cape Town, and have an interest in Linux. Last December, I discovered your podcasts and have downloaded and listened to season five. Roll on season six. I find them very informative and enjoyable listening to boot. So you decided not to do the South African accent on that one, then? <laughs> I did try in, in, uh, in practice. Our, yeah, rehearsals is too grand a term, but in, <laughs> in our vague, incoherent practicing. George Castro asked us an important question on IRC. If you're from the UK, shouldn't it be Series 6? These are the kinds of questions that keep me up at night. Aww. Good. Well, listen to this episode and that'll sort your insomnia right out. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have this voicemail. Hi, how you doing there? Uh, red tape from Mangsland, Isle of Man. Um, just got this message in from Jono. My favourite podcasts, though, are um, the Ubuntu UK podcast, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I think they have consistently done a really absolutely fantastic job with that. It's really informative, it's loose, it's fun to listen to. Um, so I really strongly recommend, recommend that. I think it's podcast.ubuntu-uk.co.uk, um, something like that. Uh, hopefully I'll clarify. Okay, so this is, uh, I hope that helps. Um, this was on uh, 20th of February 2003 on Ubuntu One Air. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah. Would you like to clarify, Bovin? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, podcast.ubuntu.uk. Uh, uh, dot, dot something. <laughs> just something just try all of them. So, yeah. Thanks, John. If you Google <laughs> Ubuntu podcast, it'll show up. <laughs> Do you know, actually, I was watching that uh, that episode at the time, and uh, Sophie, my daughter, was doing her, her, her homework, and she was she came over and saw the screen. She went, oh, is that Jono? And I said, yes. And I, I, I gave a little IRC message to Jono, and I said, oh, Jono, can you give him a question because he was doing his q and I said, Jono, can you please tell my daughter to stop watching you and do her homework? And so Jono on the video, if you go and watch it, Jono says, like, yeah, do your homework because it's very important you do your homework. And, oh, by the way, if you do your homework, your daddy will buy you a pony. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, thanks, Jono. Yeah, you've got a back garden, haven't you? <laughs> yes. And finally, for those of you missing tomorrow's technology today, the Herbert Maxwell Foster Curmudgeon Memorial Sound Archive is now up and running. Uh, it contains all the surviving episodes of Tomorrow's Technology Today, the documentary and the mysterious transmission from space that was yesterday's technology today. And we'll include a link to it in our show notes. Excellent. So if you're missing that, you can find out uh, exactly where to get all of the ones. Or just download all of our episodes because they're in them. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> I, I'd recommend that, in fact. If you don't want to listen to our rubbish, you just want to listen to <laughs> Download the... all our episodes and then cut out all of us <laughs> and just listen to the bits of the curmudgeons. Indeed. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that entertains, engages or enrages you, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. Please do get in touch. I mean it. Just one message. Just to know there's someone out there who cares. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, it's been uh, interesting. <laughs> Emotional. <laughs> doing, doing our second episode of two so far. It's been about 30 minutes. Yes. <laughs> uh, but if you have any feedback, Tony's given you all the details. And, um, yeah, hopefully see you next week. Yep. Yes. <laughs> next week. That's right. Next yeah. week, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. right. We'd it? love to hear from you. Anything, if you have anything we should talk about or suggestions. Oh, it's Wednesday 13th of March. Bye. Bye. Bye.